look, I think it's worth just highlighting because this is a really important, this is the first time we've seen government action of this scale and, and the resulting kind of rebound effect on something that's really important. Humans use roughly between two and 6% of our energy on earth every year to make ammonia. Ammonia is the primary fertilizer we use to fertilize our, our crops around the world. And if not for the invention of the Haber-Bosch process, which you can read about in the book, The Alchemy of Air, and the creation of ammonia as a synthetic fertilizer, humans would all have starved in the mid 20th century. It's an incredible technology breakthrough. What we've learned over the years, however, is that when ammonia sits on the ground for too long, it volatilizes and it basically binds with oxygen and turns into nitrous oxide and goes into the atmosphere. Nitrous oxide is 300 times more potent as a greenhouse gas than CO2. It lasts longer and it absorbs more heat. So there has long been concern about the overuse of fertilizer and the overproduction of ammonia that just sits on the ground for too long that ultimately creates this incredible greenhouse gas effect. And so there has been talk in the United States under the Obama administration, under multiple EPAs. There was a Supreme Court ruling a few weeks ago that started to touch on whether or not the EPA has regulatory authority here to actually regulate the use of ammonia. Farmers generally put a lot of ammonia on the ground because they get higher yields out of their crop. The problem is if that ammonia sits there for too long, it turns into a greenhouse gas. And so regulating ammonia and regulating this nitrous oxide emission has been you know, at the forefront of green, the green movement at the forefront of uh, climate change as one of the ways to manage um, and, and, and reduce the effects of global warming from human and industry. Um, and now, you know, the Dutch government has come out and started to do some of this regulation. It's a little bit um, off because it comes from cows. And, and we're seeing what happens. Chamath. Freebrook, can we finally admit that it's the vegans fault now? Well, at this point, actually, um, you know, oh, is, it, is that a yes? No, no, the, the ammonia production in the Netherlands is from the I mean, cows. The, it's from so cows. the Netherlands, yeah. just so you guys know, the Netherlands is the, wor is the world's third largest dairy exporter. Uh, they export $3 billion a year of, dairy, of milk to the rest Crazy. of the world, to other countries. Um, and so they have all these cows that are like densely packed and they're peeing everywhere and that pee is ammonia and it's causing all of these problems. The other problem with ammonia, so if you guys look at the United States, corn farmers farm in the Midwest. When it rains, the ammonia on their fields goes into the streams, goes into the uh, Mississippi River, and goes into the Gulf of Mexico. In the Gulf of Mexico, there is a massive hypoxic zone. There are no fish. They're all dead. Because when ammonia ends up in the water, it kills life. And so there's this green algae and no fish and everything dies. And so that's what the Dutch are trying to regulate. And the EU generally has been trying to regulate is the removal of excess ammonia in ag production and in and in, in Right, but I, I, again, I still hear, though, that if 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 if... We ate less vegetables. This wouldn't be a problem. Not correct. <laughs> Not correct. Most of the production of ammonia is used to make animal feed, which is used to feed animals to make beef, which is a terrible decision. You could feed it olives. As we know, olives taste delicious. But they're I'm Freeburg, sure the, is the issue here olives, yeah. that <laughs> is the issue here that the regulators hit the brakes too hard on these farmers and they should have maybe had a more gradual well, landing for them is it's been talked about for a long time. And in the US, there's just no way a law is going to pass because the US Senate is controlled primarily by rural states, which are ag heavy. So you see a lot of, you don't see a lot of bills that hurt farmers get passed in the United States because the Senate is controlled by farmers that are elect, oh, sorry, senators that are elected by farmer, by big farming communities and farming states. And so, um, you know, it's been hard to get a regulation like this passed where folks have tried to and talked about doing it. Um, around the world, however, in a place like the Netherlands and the EU, where, as I mentioned before, they're far more progressive um, and have this very kind of green hat on, they're starting to take this sort of climate change action, as they're calling it. And that climate change action, you know, does have the ramifications of destroying. By the way, one of the things they said is we expect, and this will destroy the livelihoods of many dairy farmers in, in the Netherlands. That was horrible. By the way, look, all kidding aside. They, said that. they said that directly, by the way. And the dairy farmers are like, F you, you're not destroying our business for climate change. I have a specific question, nothing. though, which is, has there not been some efforts to engineer how these plants themselves absorb nitrogen? Yes, great, Chamath. I have three businesses on this. It's totally right. Technology is going to solve this problem. I'm super optimistic on that. There are uh, microbes that are being used to coat seed. Those microbes can pull nitrogen out of the atmosphere directly, so you don't need ammonia. Uh, you use far less ammonia. There's a couple companies that are doing this really effectively. They're growing like crazy. They're doing really well. Um, there are other projects, uh, and there's very simple solutions. My last company, we had a product called Nitrogen Advisor. 
where we basically told farmers, instead of dumping all the fertilizer at the start of the season, you pace it out so the fertilizer doesn't sit there and volatilize. There's all these solutions that technology allows from software to bioengineering to these uh, microbial solutions. Um, and so we're definitely, um, I think, going to resolve this. But meanwhile, these governments are in a frenzy to solve the, the climate change problem. And, you know, they're going to start to pass these laws that really hurt the livelihoods of, of uh, you know, ag producers.